Sonic CD, Sonic Chaos, Sonic 2, and Sonic 3. I think we can all agree that these were some great Sonic games for their respective consoles, but have you ever thought what they would look like during development? Well, back in November 2019, Hidden Palace revealed a plentiful amount of Sonic prototypes out to the public. Some of them really exciting, others were a bit, yeah, it's alright, but they're all interesting. Now you can go all over YouTube and you'll see people doing gameplays or like hacking into it, blah 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 blah, but do they work on real hardware? Well, I'm sure someone's already tested these, but here we go. I want to find out for myself and I want to share it with you guys. Let's go with the Sonic 2019 November prototypes. I'm losing my words here. Let's just do this. Okay, so back in November, DRX streamed these prototypes himself once every week. The very first one he showed off was Sonic CD version 0.02. Now with this prototype, it actually took me a while to get this working, it just wouldn't start. It just kept going to the Sega chant at the beginning and then it just hung there. But then I realised I was using image burn incorrectly, I should have done it at 2 speed, not 1 speed. My fault. But we should see yeah, that it's actually starting up now, so good news there. And here we are with the title screen, and you've got a new game, Time Attack. Can I just quickly go there that if you go on to Time Attack, because I actually played this earlier, that it actually remembers your times. Now, for a prototype, I didn't think it would actually save, so that's actually quite impressive. Playing the game, you can see that it works perfectly fine. You've got a few glitches here and there, like in Sonic Sprite, and you have to go into the past twice to actually get into the past. But that only happens the first time round. But all of these problems happen in the emulator as well, so it's not exactly a hardware fault. To be perfectly honest, it's actually relatively easy to get this game working. You just need a CDR, not a CDRW, and use Image Burn and load up the Q file, write it at two times speed, and Bob's your uncle, it will work. Well, on a Japanese Mega CD anyway. Okay, so the question is, does this work on real hardware? Well, obviously. Yeah, no problems here, I think we can move on. There was another Sonic CD prototype that he released, and I'm not going to bother showing it here, but I can confirm that does work on real hardware as well. Next up is Sonic Chaos on the Game Gear. Yes, the actual Game Gear. I've got a Mega Drive... Mega Drive? I've got a Game Gear here that's been modded with VGA output, and it's got a new screen that I can actually see what I'm doing. And I've got an EverDrive cart here, it's the EverDrive GG by Crix. And yeah, let's load up the game. And yeah, it starts up perfectly fine, no problems. There is no sound to this game, which it, again, that happens on emulation as well. There's no sound on that, so it's not a, a technical fault with the hardware. So it's not the Game Gear that's struggling with it, it's the actual prototype with no sound in it. I played this all the way from the beginning to end, and to be honest, there was nothing that, you know, caught me off guard. Nothing different from emulation, it all seems to work pretty perfectly. Anything that you see wrong here, like with colours and such, that actually happens on Kega, which is my emulator of choice. And I find it hilarious that the Sonic has passed results, it's way too big for the Game Gear screen. But again, that's not exclusive to the hardware, that happens on emulation. And yeah, it works really well, so does this work on real hardware? Again, yes. So we're back to Sonic Chaos, but this time on the Master System, and we've got two prototypes. We got the July 13th prototype and a slightly earlier June 30th prototype. Let's start off with the earlier one, shall we? Okay, so we go into prototypes, and there's June 30th, and we'll select that and start it. Sonic Chaos or Sonic Can Tell's version 0.20. So we press the start button. Um. I don't know what you want me to say. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. It looks like it's not going anywhere. I tried reflashing it onto it and again, no dice. It doesn't seem to work, but hang on, let's just not panic. Let's just try something else a moment. Now I've got an EverDrive MD here, which works for the Mega Drive. And as we know, the Mega Drive is actually backwards compatible with the Master System. When I load this up with the Mega Drive, it actually works perfectly. No problems whatsoever. Press and start at the title screen actually takes us to the level select, then we're able to pick a character, and away you go. 
and there's quite a lot of interesting things here. It seems to be no different from emulation again. It works perfectly on the Mega Drive. It doesn't seem to work on the real deal. And that's kind of a bummer. I know that this has backwards compatibility. It has all the hardware of the Master System inside of the Mega Drive. But uh, does that really count? Do you know what? I think we might be in luck because this is the American Master System that I have. Maybe, just maybe, there's some sort of region lock on it. Let me just go and find out. What I have here is the PAL Master System, the European version, the 50 Hertz, the rubbish one to be honest, but it does have a region switch on there which changes the frequency and the language to Japanese. So let's give this a shot. Okay, so I've got to load it up, my capture card's just being slow. I thought we'd try 50 Hertz first before laughs. So, uh, let's grab that controller. Go into prototypes, load up June the 30th, select and start. Okay, so there's the title screen. Let's press a button. No, didn't think that would work. But will the Japanese version work? Well, the Japanese region, that's what I mean. Let's give that a shot. Okay, prototypes, uh, June 30th. Oh, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Come on, come on. No, no, no dice. I, I don't know what the problem is. And funny enough, if I actually press the reset button, <laughs> nothing still happens. Is it the EverDrive? It could be the cart itself. What I really need to do is get the ROM and just put on a cart. Uh, that's it, nothing in front of it, behind it. Nothing like that. But it works on a Mega Drive with an EverDrive, so why not the Master System? Why not the real thing? It bugs me. This is going to be nearly everyone's protocol to load up Master System games on their console using an EverDrive or an equivalent. Um, if this ain't going to work, then I don't think their solution is going to work either. So, does it work on real hardware? No. That's my findings. If anyone is able to confirm that it does work on real hardware, and I mean the actual Master System, not the Mega Drive, I do not count that. The actual Master System, please, please let me know. Let's just uh, put that over there uh, and get my... Oh, God. Okay, so I've got my American one back in and let's load up the July 13th prototype. And here we got a different title screen. You press the start button and no problems. We're actually into the zone select this time. Already we got further than the previous prototype. Yet again, I played this from A to Z and I saw no issues, nothing different compared to emulation. Everything seems to work really, really well. So that's a shame. It just seems to be the previous prototype that's not having none of it. But this one, we're all good. So does this one work on real hardware? Absolutely. Next on the list is a Sonic 2 prototype. Now there was two that was released and I'm going to be showcasing Sunday's one because that was a little bit more interesting to me and I'm just going to assume if this one works then the next one will. If this one doesn't work again I'll move on to the next one and see how that is. As previously mentioned I'm using EverDrive MD version 3 for this. Well we're at the title screen so that's great. And I'm dead already so... <laughs> It just amazes me like what how the game came to be and I just always want to check out like, what's so different what was going to be presented why did they change this and that it, you know it brings out so many theories and so much discussion around the community it's actually quite a nice feeling not gonna lie with this one I didn't actually go from beginning to end I just kept going into level select and trying out some different levels and saw that they majority work nothing dissimilar to playing this game on an emulator but does it work on real hardware? Yes. All right, the big one. This is why you're all here. You want to see if the Sonic 3 prototype works on real hardware. Well, I'm not gonna bother. We're just gonna end the video there and um, goodbye. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You can undislike the video now.
please. Right, so far so good. Now that is actually usual, that happens on Kaga. And so this is title screen, that's what it actually looks like in this prototype. Uh, it takes you straight to the level select and let's just for now round up, load up a random level. And yeah, so far so good. No bugs to report, I tried everything from start to finish, I even gave the special stages a go and what, I just can't get my head around how they managed to pull that off. And yes, this is on the actual Mega Drive. The new, I mean old music sounds great. Some of the new boss gimmicks are perfectly functional. Yeah, I think it's obviously going to pass here. So, does it work on real hardware? Of course it does. To be honest, not a bad run. Oh god, no, that's going to give you a headache. Hey, there we go. Oh lord, oh god. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Ah, there we go. So that's all the prototypes that I'm showcasing today, and it looks like most of them work. It was just the one on the Master System. For the life of me, I could not get it to go past the title screen. But otherwise, if you want to try Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Sonic CD, or Sonic Chaos on the actual Game Gear, it works on the Game Gear. Feel free, it will work on your consoles, as long as you have a flash card of some sort. And I think I'll take this opportunity to say uh, that a big massive thanks needs to go out to DRX and all of their supporters, all of the people that helped contribute to getting these prototypes out in the open, so then guys like me and you and well, the whole world can experience this for ourselves. And that's the end of the video guys, I really hope you enjoyed that, make sure to leave a like and to subscribe if you want to see more videos to the series. A massive shout out to all of my sponsors who are on screen right now, and I'll see you again real soon guys, take care, have a good one.